And we're back with some more Dyson Sphere program. And today I thought we'd start by just having a quick look at this little mini Dyson Sphere we put together. The main plan here is we're going to build the max size Dyson Sphere we possibly can around a blue giant that we have in this system. Or, well, in this galaxy, not in this particular solar system we're in. However, it's going to be really, really big. For example, this, this Dyson Sphere here is about 0.5 AU, or one-tenth the size of the Dyson Sphere we're going to make. And you'll see there that we are 5 AUs away from the center of that star. This will be where the radius of our next, or of our giant Dyson Sphere is going to be. So we're that far away, like that, that little Dyson Sphere in there, that's a tiny little Dyson Sphere that we're making. However, this one, we have been pumping solar sails into it for a little while. Uh, about, ooh, let's see, in the last 10 hours we've averaged 4,367 sails per minute. And it's not finished. It took us 10 hours at 4,000 sails per minute and we still have not even finished this Dyson Sphere. And you need to imagine that as the Dyson Sphere gets bigger, the surface area increases. Yeah, it, it would literally take hundreds, and uh, actually probably more. It, it's going to take a lot of hours to fill in the Dyson Sphere, unless we really scale up production. And to do that today, we're going to, well, produce a lot of power. We want a lot of power so that we can just dump power onto planets without having to put a Dyson Sphere everywhere we go. So this Dyson Sphere, we've gone above 100 gigawatts. We've got about 107. And I think it's time we went to one of those planets in the center, started putting down our uh, solar collectors and started making antimatter. Lots and lots of antimatter. We're going to need to produce about, like even at a thousand rockets per minute, it would take us an eternity to build this thing. We're going to need about 5,000, maybe 10,000 rockets per minute to build our proper Dyson Sphere. All right, let's go get it. Let's go set ourselves up. This is what the Dyson Sphere looks like up close. Still getting closer. Still getting closer. We're moving at 2,000 meters per second and it still feels like we're just slowly creeping up on this thing. It's freaking enormous. It's going to be really bright working in here, I can tell that already. Now, interestingly enough, when we're on this planet, this planet is inside the Dyson Sphere. So theoretically, I have been advised that if you put solar collectors on it, or uh, what do you call them, ray receivers, we have 100% uptime. You don't even need to feed them, you don't need to feed them those ah, gravity lenses. You can just settle down on the planet, chuck them down anywhere, and they will constantly generate, consistently generate power. I love that the Dyson Sphere is so large in the background, you can barely see the planet. And wow, that's, it's really bright in here. And let's see what the view is like from in here. That's actually... A lot better than I thought it was going to be. I thought the whole thing would cover everything you looked at. It's not even that bad at all. All right, let's find a good place to set up on. The first thing we're going to do here is just settle down a little logistics tower, stick in a ray receivers around it to power the whole thing, and then we basically request in the things we think we're going to need. At any point, we can request in more. In fact, one thing I should always make sure to request in when you start is interstellar logistics stations so that we can request in more stuff. If this sta station fills up, we just put down another one. Oh, and also ships, actually. Now we're okay on ships for the moment. But that's all you do. Stick down one of these and then as you can expand it out as you need. Now I'm thinking we're probably going to want to, well, landfill this entire planet. There is a bunch of lava around here that's going to be no good for solar collection. So what we've done here is we've just stretched a ring of these all the way around the planet and the rumors would appear to be true. Every single one of these is activated. None of them are actually having any downtime at all which means we can run these the entire way around the planet and just keep extracting uh, photons as much as we want. Now we could get in those, uh, oh, what do you call them, the graviton lenses and double the capacity, but why? We can just do a second line of them and we don't have to import anything then. We might just collect photons here and export the photons from this planet to somewhere else where we actually make the antimatter and the, the antimatter mm, containers, or what do they call them, antimatter fuel rods, because that's going to require a whole bunch of production. Hmm, let me think about this for a second. Having played around with the calculator for a bit, I think making these on planet is not actually that space consuming. They only require most of the basic resources and they're all on this planet and available. So let's, uh, we're gonna tap into this place, grab a bunch of mines, grab in some resources and basically tower it up. Ooh, oh, that actually looks really pretty from there. You can see all the solar sails splashing out. It's kind of nice to be in the middle of a Dyson Sphere. Anyway, uh, yes, I am going to tap into all the veins in this planet. We're just going to put mines everywhere. And once that's done, we're going to put together a little uh, production capacity center for all of our antimatter needs. Of all the quirks of this game, I think I dislike the mining one the most. The amount of time and effort you have to put into just placing mines is that's kind of frustrating. Uh, but with our science so high, we're, there's a, that, one, that one mine is producing 525 stone per minute. These things can... Oh my god, they're 735. 
Yeah, with enough research, you can definitely churn out an enormous amount of resources with just a very few mines, and of course I missed one. Now, my plan for all of these is to just give them one transport belt all to themselves anyway. That way, as the research goes up, I don't have to worry, because if I stack a couple of lines together, like if I stack the wrong ones, we could possibly fully saturate a line later on, though. I don't like it. I think it's 36 or 1800 per line. Uh, yeah, we'll get there eventually. Our research is constantly running in the background because our research planet is still going strong. Our average for the last 10 hours is 918 signs per minute. So uh, our science is looking pretty good. In fact, where is it? Uh, mining speed is 350% and ore consumption is 21.29. The way I believe that works is we're, we're actually, instead of taking the full 100% of the resources, if we're extracting, say, 100 per minute, instead of extracting 100 per minute, we're only extracting 21.29. Well, that's how much it goes down by in terms of actual real ore mined, but we still get that 100 ore out. So 80, well, 78.8% less resources used. Hell yes. And it's only going to get better and better. All right. Uh, next up. Oh yeah, I want to tap into every single resource patch, don't I? Sometimes you just have to stop and appreciate how pretty this game is. Dear Lord. <laughs> And our Dyson Sphere is getting closer and closer to completion. Oh, you can actually see the solar sails streaming past. Uh, and what are we at? 116 gigawatts. Perfect. Also, I was here to pick something up, wasn't I? Uh, wait, no. Transport belt. Yeah, grab some of that. Anyway, yes, back to mining. After all the other builds we've done, this one's actually turning out to be relatively easy. Um, actually, let's go have a quick look at the calculator. This here is all the bits and bobs we're going to need, though there's a few emissions. I've gotten rid of sulfuric acid from the list because we're going to import the sulfuric acid from another planet that has oceans of this stuff. At the same time, the graphene we're going to pull from gas giants, so we don't need any of the stuff associated with that. That means we don't need any stone, we don't need any sulfuric acid, we don't need any oil. All we need is iron plate, which we can turn into steel, and okay, we're going to need some titanium, that's what the sulfuric acid is for, copper, and high purity silicon. That's, that's it, that's pretty much all the basic resources we need, and we don't even need that much of all of these. And at the end of the day, we'll get 110 antimatter per minute out of this. So, yes, that should provide us with plenty of power for the future. We'll, we'll, we'll work out the power once it's all done. But for now, let's just start building the sucker. And let's start with, well, iron plate, I suppose. I thought I would show something wonderful that I've started playing around with with the blueprint mod. Now, I never played with this too much, but you can import and export blueprints. So right now, we currently have the green circuit build in, well stored and we can place that down if you want it but next up i want to do the blue circuit build now i could go off to another planet and copy it but instead i've been to another planet and copied and pasted it into a text file so what we can do is we can go in here and we saved blue chips we copy all of this this is going to be the output string it gives you i'll show you how you get that in a minute and then we come back in here and we import it using this import button uh, is that imported yeah it is perfect so there is our blue chip now too close to another logistics tower. That's fine. I can't see anything. One second. Ah, there we go. We're just going to squeeze that right in there. And boom. Blue chips done. So this allows you to copy-paste whole builds. So you can make default builds, whatever, for smelting, iron, copper, the whole nine yards. And not only does it copy all of that in, it also saves the settings. So this has, this blue circuit build already requests copper and high purity silicon and stores the microcrystalline components for me automatically. It doesn't put in the ships, but, you know, what more do you want? Seriously. It even stored the minimum uh, minimum load of drones. That's so handy. So now, next thing, let's say I want to do is I want to put in processors. I want to put down a processor build on top of this as well. That's going to take the green and the blue and turn them into processors. Well, let's just alt tab back out, get rid of the blue chips. We don't need those anymore. Go back in here and where did I put processors? Uh, processors, 17 in a row. We'll just copy all of that back into the game, paste it in. Yep, there it is. Ew. Damn it, I'm going to need somewhere to put this, aren't I? We can squeeze it in somewhere. Uh, damn it. Just come on, I'm trying to do an example here, people. Work with me. All right, there we'll do. Too close to the logistics station. Oh, thank you, thank you. Ah, fine, close enough. It's going to be a little bit off kilter, but I don't care. And there you go. Now you've got your processor built in place. So this allows you to just rapidly scale up your production. I need to make a bunch of default ones that I'm going to save into a text file. And once I do that, it will make expanding so much handier. Excuse me while I just finish off putting off, well, finish putting the finishing touches on our little antimatter production facility. 
Oh, I did forget to show you how to export a blueprint. That was dumb of me. Uh, what you first need to do is have the blueprint in your hand, so to speak. So out to out like that. And then you just click on this one there, the uh, this V one. This one is to output it. So that will copy that to your um, your memory so that you can paste it into a text file. I mean, it'll copy it to your clipboard so you can paste it into a text file. This is for importing. Now remember, you have to have it in your hand to do it. If it's not selected, it won't work. After filling this planet up with a lot of industry on the top, this is this is all the industry we stuck in here. It's way overkill, actually. I didn't need nearly this much, but I just sort of stuck with default designs because it was easier. This is our annihilation constraint sphere. Yeah, this is this is the one of the major components for making antimatter containers. So now we should be able to churn out a bunch of antimatter fuel rods. Right, now how we're going to work this is, where did I put the input? Ah, yes. Still transport dot down here. Ooh, the graphics look weird. That's actually going this direction, not the other. And this leads all the way back down here to all of these photon collectors. These ray receivers. Now once you put them on photon generation, what's going to happen is all of them are going to start dumping photons out into this belt, which should all go up here. And then what I'm thinking is, I was going to chuck it into a tower, but I think we make a sort of a ring around here. We might have to get rid of some of these resources. I, I don't mind losing a bit. We've got so much, it's actually ridiculous. So I think we make a ring around here and make antimatter rods out of them. Yeah, I think I think we can squeeze in something nice and eh, pretty looking at least. And I think we're just about ready to fire this up. No, no, we are ready to fire this up. Whether it will work or not, I have no idea. All we do is we set this to photon generation. Then we're going to copy that. To the bulk paste and then we are going to bulk paste this all the way around the planet everything is now switching over to photon generation will this kill the amount of power we're drawing from the dyson sphere yeah i have no idea this is 220 of them being switched on all at once and all maxed out so probably not very healthy it does take a little bit of time to circumnavigate the globe in this game come on we're almost there and this should generate us 1100 photons per minute uh, there we go. Let's see. You're set to... Yeah, five for a minute. You are... Boom, you're popping some out as well. Wait, why are you not popping ones out? Stop being so slow. And uh, there they all go. Right, then all of this will go up here, the photons. They'll all fly down here. And then they're going to hang a right and go down this direction. And they're going to go past these devices, which will turn them into hydrogen and antimatter. Now, to make these antimatter things, we need both hydrogen and antimatter, so it's good that it produces both of them. So they pop down here, and they get sucked into this machine. So the hydrogen and antimatter is required in equal parts. But we also need this annihilation constraint sphere and this titanium alloy. Eh, pretty handy, we've got them close by. May have done a little bit of prep work. Right, so that comes down here and feeds into these on this side, and gives us enough to make the antimatter, mm, antimatter fuel rods, which will get chucked out here and dumped back in this direction into that machine. Assuming... Come on, what? Why is there no antimatter? Okay, what did I do? Oh my god, they're both set to hydrogen, aren't they? One second, a couple of minutes of fiddling around, and now the antimatter is coming out of one side, hydrogen on the other. That feeds into this machine, and there we go. Antimatter fuel rod production has started. Oh, okay, now I just gotta go down to the end of the line here and clean everything off. Oh, wow. None of it's making it to the end of the line. Right, so production is good then. Then we just have to see how much antimatter we're producing and how much of everything. We should be getting 1,100 photons per minute and that should be, whoa. Yep, that's a lot of photons. <laughs> that is just a beautiful stream of light. I find it wonderful that these ones are starting here and I could have just turned the belt around and had them feed in, but I literally wanted them to circle the globe. It just seemed more thematic, I want to say. All right, let's uh, let's do a quick run over the numbers and see exactly what's this worth. And actually, let's grab a power plant and show you what this is worth. I never bothered to play around with these too much before and just to figure out the power requirements. But going through them here now, I can see exactly what's going on. What you get is an antimatter fuel rod. That's what we're producing. And it has 7.5 gigajoules of energy contained in it. However, we can only extract that at 75 megawatts per second. So that works out as this one antimatter fuel rod should run for 100 seconds It'll all get turned into energy, and basically every 100 seconds you get 75 megawatts for that whole 100 seconds. So what does that work out with for us? Ooh, one second while I grab my calculator. We are producing 110 of those per minute. You know, let's bring up the production graph. Where is it? Yeah, about 110 per minute. 
So at 110 per minute, that works out at about 183 every 100 seconds, which is what we really care about. And 183 multiplied by 75 megawatts means we've got a portable 13.7 gigawatts, which not nearly as much as I thought it was going to be, actually. Yeah, it's only 13.7 gigawatts. I think we double this up a little bit. Yeah, give me one minute. I'm going to chuck down, I'm going to double down on all of this. What we did was we added an entire second batch of these photon ray receivers. So now we're generating way more photons. Our critical photons are up to 2200 per minute. Then all we did was we, okay, we maybe had one belt on top of the other. We had them all come down here and we extended this the whole way around. It now circles the planet. Well, circles the pole. So you can see there it goes all the way around. And we just have the photons feed on here and there. It's just we can't put all of them on one belt. There's too many. Then the opposite direction we had the the antimatter we just extended that on as well so now we've got even more antimatter production but it does look very pretty however let's uh let's have a quick go over the numbers here and what did we actually gain ourselves out of doing all of this now it's just kicked into gear so the 10 minute numbers are going to be a little bit wonky but the one minute numbers are about accurate we're going to be producing about 220 antimatter fuel rods per minute which if we burn them all say we're burning them all constantly that works out at about 27.5 gigawatts so to put that in perspective, this planet's drawing about two, what was it, one gigawatt? And our giant science planet, I think, is pulling down about five gigawatts. So 27.5 gigawatts means we could probably, okay, we could comfortably take five planets and just cram them full of stuff and provide all the power for them and just import all the power from this location. However, this has got to be thinking. I mean, this Dyson Sphere can support, what, 138 gigawatts and we're only drawing 27 of it here? We could definitely double this up again even and just have even more antimatter, but that that would be for another episode. This, I think this worked out well, considering this planet was pretty much naked when we started. We, we had a good day. Dear Lord. Though I'm thinking we're going to need, yeah, probably another two rows of these uh, these photon collectors. This is, this is going to get a little bit out of control, but then we should have enough power that we can expand. The plan is, let's see, oh, let's zoom out a bit past all of that. If we zoom all the way out, and rotate this, you can see there's big blue over there. That's our our blue giant that we want to build our massive Dyson Sphere around. So what I was thinking is, we say take one system, say oh, this system here, picking one at random. We grab this and we build a production facility there to turn out 1,000 rockets per minute for a Dyson Sphere. Then we export all of those to big blue and we just cover big blue in launchers. And then while they're launching and Big Blue is starting up, we go to say Hater G over here and then we build another facility that does 1,000 rockets per minute and then we start exporting them to big blue so it's launching 2000 at a time then we go to hop point and then we go to this one and then we just keep going around system to system getting each one to generate a thousand rockets per minute and ship them to blue and we just turn that into a giant launch saddle well that would be the plan and all the power for all of this would be coming from here all the power we wouldn't bother making dyson spheres around everywhere we just make one dyson sphere here make it enormous and have this generate us all the antimatter we need to run everything anyway let's uh let's see where the Dyson Sphere or the sail launching is at the moment. Ah, there we are. Aren't you a beauty? It almost looks like fireworks in the distance. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut that out here for the day. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Good luck.